What is this grey figure seen by countless witnesses on camera around the grounds of Norham Castle? How did just nine knights defend this entire mega fortress? And the infamous seven month siege? Norham Castle, located in Northumberland, England, is an impressive medieval fortress that has witnessed centuries of history. Although much of the castle is now in ruins, the remnants provide insight into its original design and layout. The castle is situated on a natural defensive position overlooking the River Tweed. It was surrounded by a curtain wall with strong defensive features, including multiple towers and a wall around three meters thick. At the heart of the castle stood the keep, a massive stone structure that served as the main residence and the last line of defense. It was a multi-storied structure and featured living quarters for the Lord, his family and essential personnel. The keep typically had walls up to seven meters thick, arrow slits and a fortified entrance to withstand attacks. The inner courtyard was often surrounded by other buildings used for administrative purposes and the day-to-day -day functioning of the castle. Surrounded by a water-filled trench, the natural terrain, such as the River Tweed, served as natural defense. The river fed two moats, one each for the inner and outer bailey. Given its location along the river, Norham Castle might have had a dock or access point for boats, allowing for resupply and reinforcement from the water. It's important to note that the castle underwent various modifications and expansions over the centuries, adapting to the changing needs of its occupants and the evolution of military architecture. The ruins that remain today are a mashup of ruins spanning four centuries, Pinning down an exact layout of this castle at any one time is a challenging task for historians. The castle layout went through additional buildings, thickening of walls, reshaping of towers and upgrading of the keep, also known as the Great Tower and countless repairs after centuries of sieges. The first Norham Castle, built in 1121 by Ranulf Flambard, the Bishop of Durham. The primary objective behind its construction was the safeguarding of the crucial road into Scotland and the ford over the River Tweed. Initially constructed as a ringwork and bailey fortification, the ring or inner ward was surrounded by a sizeable earth bank mounted with a wooden palisade, protecting a two-storey stone structure, which likely served as the bishop's ceremonial hall. The bailey or outer ward encompassed an irregularly shaped area to the west and south. In 1136, Norham Castle found itself in the grip of historical events during a period known as the Anarchy. Positioned strategically along the eastern border, the castle became a frequent target for Scottish forces seeking to exploit the chaos prevailing in England at the time. King David, seizing the opportunity presented by the Anarchy, embarked on a campaign to advance his interests in Northumberland. Supporting Matilda in the power struggle, David directed his forces to launch an assault on the region. The Scottish attack resulted in the capture of Norham Castle, a significant blow to the defensive efforts along the border. The precise details of the events during this episode are somewhat obscure in historical records. However, it appears that the occupation was relatively short-lived, as the castle was reportedly returned to the control of the Bishop of Durham, shortly after David's initial incursion. The circumstances surrounding the return of Norham Castle to the Bishop of Durham remain somewhat unclear, but it is evident that the castle's strategic importance persisted despite the challenges posed by external conflicts. In 1138, Norham Castle faced renewed turmoil as King David of Scotland returned to capture the fortress. This marked the second significant assault on the castle within a short span of time. During this episode, a group of nine English knights valiantly defended Norham Castle against King David's forces. Despite their bravery, their efforts proved futile, leading to the eventual destruction of the castle. The attackers under the command of King David managed to overcome the defences, resulting in the loss of this vital stronghold. The tide turned, however, for Norham Castle following King David's defeat at the Battle of the Standard, the outcome of this battle constrained David's northern objectives, and as a result, Norham Castle reverted to the control of the Bishop of Durham. In 1154, despite assurances given during the conflict, Henry II's accession to the throne marked a change in the fate of the castle. The political landscape shifted as Henry II focused on restoring and strengthening the English monarchy, 
sought to reclaim territories that had been pledged to Scotland during the years of the anarchy. In light of this new direction, Norham Castle became a target for English expansion into the northern regions. Consequently, the restoration of English control over the castle and the surrounding territories became a key objective for Henry. Between 1157 and 1170, Norham Castle underwent a significant transformation under the directive of King Henry. Bishop Hugh de Puiset, responding to the royal command, initiated a comprehensive upgrade of the castle's defences, marking a notable shift from its earlier wooden fortifications to a more formidable stone structure. The ambitious project saw the construction of the Great Tower, a monumental addition that was situated atop the remains of the former ceremonial hall in the Inner Ward. The Great Tower, often the focal point of medieval castles, served both as a symbol of authority and as a strategic defensive stronghold. Simultaneously, both the inner and outer ward's gatehouses were subjects of meticulous reconstruction. These gatehouses, critical components of the castle's defensive system, were redesigned and rebuilt to enhance their effectiveness. In 1174, the extensive modifications to Norham Castle were completed. This transformation coincided with a critical moment in history, when William the Lion, King of Scotland, undertook a military campaign that would underscore the strategic significance of the castle. William the Lion's military expedition led him to pass by the castle during his attack, which ultimately concluded with his capture at Alnwick. The fortress played a role in the unfolding events, showcasing its newfound strength and contributing to the broader defence of the Anglo-Scottish border. Meanwhile, King Henry II, ever mindful of the strategic importance of the castle, and perhaps harbouring doubts about the bishop's loyalty, took direct possession of the stronghold. This move reflected the king's determination to ensure the stronghold's allegiance to the English crown, aligning with his broader strategy of consolidating control over key border fortifications. Norham Castle, along with Wark and Berwick Castle, emerged as a vital component of the main fortification lines protecting the narrow, eastern stretch of land along the Scottish border. The three castles collectively formed a formidable defensive network, serving as critical bulwarks against potential incursions from the north. In 1197, Norham Castle experienced another shift in ownership and control. Bishop Philip of Poitou, who held the ecclesiastical position, saw the restoration of the castle to his authority, a decision made by King Richard I. While strategic strongholds like Norham Castle were often instrumental in securing royal authority, their administration sometimes fell under the purview of ecclesiastical figures. The decision by King Richard to restore the castle to the bishop underscores the complex interplay of secular and religious powers in medieval England. In 1208, following the death of Bishop Philip, Norham Castle underwent another change in ownership. King John, seizing the opportunity presented by the vacancy, assumed control of the fortress. King John, known for his ambitious and often authoritarian rule, recognised the strategic importance of the castle in the context of the ongoing instability within England and the persistent threat of Scottish aggression. In response to these concerns, he initiated further modifications to the castle. The alterations were likely designed not only to enhance the overall defensive capabilities, but also to serve as a deterrent against potential incursions from the north. 1215. The strategic significance of Norham Castle was starkly demonstrated when Scottish forces, led by King Alexander II, besieged the fortress. The upgrades and fortifications implemented by King John were put to the ultimate test during this siege, showcasing the castle's resilience and the effectiveness of the improvements made in the face of a determined adversary. Sir Robert Clifford emerged as a central figure during the siege, successfully leading the defence against Alexander's forces. The siege endured for a challenging 40 days, during which Sir Robert Clifford skillfully repelled the Scottish attempts to capture the castle. 1217. Norham Castle experienced another shift in ownership as King Henry III restored control of the fortress to Bishop de la Marche. 1291, the castle showcased its multifaceted role by hosting diplomatic functions, underscoring its importance beyond its military significance. In May of that year, the castle became the setting for a significant event when Anthony Beck, the Bishop of Durham, played host to King Edward I and his court. 
This gathering took place as King Edward journeyed northward to address and adjudicate the succession to the Scottish throne. 1292, following the judgment determined by King Edward at Berwick, the monarch returned to the castle. This visit was a significant moment in the political and diplomatic manoeuvring surrounding the establishment of the new Scottish king. During this visit, John Balliol, the candidate chosen by Edward, paid homage to the king as Scotland's feudal overlord. The act of homage was a symbolic gesture that underscored the vassal lord relationship between Balliol and Edward. It represented a crucial step in formalizing the political alignment between the two rulers and solidifying Edward's influence over the Scottish monarchy. It is this period of history that plays as the origin story of the castle's resident ghost. So diving into the eerie history of Norham Castle and its resident ghost, the infamous Grey Lady. It's the 13th century and Norham Castle stands tall in the English countryside. The lord of the castle, a man by the name of William de Solis, rules with an iron fist. But our story takes a darker turn when we meet Lady Mabel, his wife. Lady Mabel wasn't living the fairy tale life you'd expect. Unhappy in her marriage, she found solace in the arms of a man of lower status. The two lovebirds hatched a plan to escape their oppressive reality. Lord Solis, consumed by jealousy and rage, discovered the forbidden love affair. In a fit of fury, he sentenced Lady Mabel to a life of imprisonment within the walls of Norham Castle. The tower became her cage, and as the days turned to nights, Lady Mabel wasted away, her heartbroken whispers echoing through the halls. Some say she died of a broken heart. Others claim her spirit lingers on. Enter the Grey Lady, the ghost of Lady Mabel, condemned to wander the castle grounds in perpetual sorrow. Witnesses have reported sightings of a misty figure draped in grey, haunting the very tower where Lady Mabel spent her final days. Late at night, as the moon casts an eerie glow over the castle, some claim to hear faint sobbing carried by the wind. The Grey Lady's presence is said to be strongest by the riverbanks, where she pines for the forbidden love that was snatched away from her. 1311 to 1312, known as the Robert Bruce Rebellion or the First War of Scottish Independence, the English strongholds in Scotland faced severe challenges. Following the death of King Edward, Robert Bruce's forces systematically dismantled English control in Scotland, capturing and reducing strongholds one by one. In a strategic move to force negotiations with the English, Robert Bruce extended his campaign into Northumberland. Amidst this military upheaval, Norham Castle stood as a formidable fortress that withstood the brunt of Robert Bruce's incursions. Recognising the strategic importance of Norham, its fortifications were deemed too formidable to penetrate, leading to the decision to leave the castle unchallenged on both occasions when Robert Bruce invaded Northumberland. 1314, a significant turning point occurred in the conflict between England and Scotland during the First War of Scottish Independence. The English war machines suffered a devastating blow as they were routed towards the Battle of Bannockburn while attempting to relieve Stirling Castle. This humiliating defeat had profound implications, leaving Northern England vulnerable to further raids from Scottish forces. The Battle of Bannockburn was a decisive confrontation that unfolded between June 23rd and 24th, 1314. Led by King Robert the Bruce, the Scottish army faced off against the English forces commanded by King Edward II. The Scots achieved a resounding victory, crippling the English military and severely diminishing their ability to maintain control over the Northern Territories. The defeat at Bannockburn had a cascading effect on the defensive capabilities of English strongholds including those along the Anglo-Scottish border. The destruction of the English war machine left Northern England exposed and susceptible to incursions from Scottish forces. The strategic landscape shifted dramatically and the security of fortifications such as Norham Castle became increasingly precarious in the aftermath of the Battle of Bannockburn. In 1315, amidst the ongoing threat of Scottish invasions and the vulnerabilities exposed by the Battle of Bannockburn, King Edward II took decisive action to secure the Scottish border. Recognising the strategic significance of the castle, he personally assumed temporary control of the fortress. The decision for King Edward II to take command of Norham Castle reflected the severity of the situation and the need for direct royal intervention to bolster the defences of key strongholds. 
1318, the castle faced a heightened threat, becoming a prime target for Scottish forces. To counter this imminent danger, Sir Thomas Grey was appointed as the constable of the castle. What followed was a year of intense conflict, marked by a relentless series of attacks and sieges. The importance of Norham Castle was evident in the sustained efforts made by the Scots to capture it. Sir Thomas Grey, in his role as constable, played a critical role in the defence of the fortress. The castle's fortifications were put to the test as it endured a near-continuous series of assaults over the course of the year. During these events, the Scots managed to breach the defences and overrun the outer bailey on more than one occasion. However, Sir Thomas Grey's steadfast leadership and the resilience of the garrison prevented the complete capture of the castle. Despite the challenges, he continued to repel the invaders, eventually expelling them and successfully maintaining control. 1319, a strategic contest for Norham Castle continued, marked by another determined effort by the Scots to capture the fortress. This time, they undertook a prolonged seven-month siege aiming to overcome the formidable defences that had proven resilient in previous conflicts. Despite their efforts, the Scots were ultimately unsuccessful in capturing Norham during the seven months. The resilience demonstrated by the defenders, likely under the command of Sir Thomas Grey or another capable leader, showcased the formidable nature of the castle's fortifications and the determination of its garrison. 1322, the ongoing conflict along the Anglo-Scottish border brought the Scots back to the castle, where they laid siege to the fortress once more. Despite the repeated attempts to capture the stronghold, Norham Castle steadfastly remained under English control. 1327, after years of resisting numerous sieges, the castle finally succumbed to the persistent assaults of the Scots. The fall of Norham Castle in marked a turning point in the ongoing conflicts along the Scottish border. The Scots, having successfully ravaged the Northern Territories, secured control of this prominent fortress, which had long been a symbol of English authority in the region. 1328, the Scottish hold on Norham Castle was relatively short-lived. The conclusion of the First War of Independence was marked by the signing of the Treaty of Northampton. This treaty, a diplomatic agreement between England and Scotland, resulted in the return of control of the castle to the Bishop of Durham. Between 1332 and 1357, Norham Castle experienced a period of relative inactivity amid the ongoing conflict of the Second War of Scottish Independence. Despite the resumption of hostilities, the castle remained largely inactive during this time. In 1333, a significant event occurred that would indirectly contribute to the stability of the castle. Edward III, in a decisive victory at the Battle of Halidon Hill, defeated a Scottish army and captured the strategically important town of Berwick-upon-Tweed. This victory not only shifted the balance of power, but also acted as a deterrent, deflecting future attacks on Norham. 1355, however, the castle briefly faced a challenge when the constable, Thomas Grey II, spotted Scottish spearmen on a raid near Norham. In an attempt to drive them away, Thomas Grey was ambushed, captured and subsequently imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle for the next two years. Despite this temporary setback, Norham Castle continued to enjoy relative peace after the Second War of Scottish Independence concluded in 1357. 1408, Norham Castle underwent a notable enhancement with a significant upgrade to the West Gate. 1422, following the upgrades of the West Gate, the Great Tower was significantly upgraded. 1461, during the War of the Roses, Norham Castle found itself in the midst of political turmoil. At this time, the castle was under the control of Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland. Henry Percy was a staunch supporter of the Lancastrian cause, displaying unwavering loyalty even after the overthrow of Henry VI and the subsequent ceding of Berwick to the Scots. The War of the Roses was a protracted conflict between the rival houses of Lancaster and York, vying for control of the English throne. Henry Percy's allegiance to the Lancastrian cause marked Norham Castle as a stronghold in support of the Lancastrian faction during this turbulent period. 1463, the castle became the target of a determined Lancastrian offensive led by King Henry VI and Queen Margaret during the War of the Roses. The Lancastrian army, under the royal leadership, launched an 18-day attack on the fortress. 
The specific motivations behind the assault on the castle during this period are not explicitly detailed, but it can be inferred that the castle's strategic location along the Scottish border made it a valuable asset in the ongoing conflict. The Lancastrian forces likely sought to control key strongholds to secure their position and influence in the region. The 18-day siege of the castle marked a challenging episode in its history, as the Lancastrian army, guided by King Henry VI and Queen Margaret, aimed to overcome the castle's defences. The duration of the siege highlighted the determination and persistence of the Lancastrian forces during this phase of the War of the Roses. 1464, following the Yorkist victory at the Battle of Hexham, Norham Castle changed allegiance. The castle was eventually surrendered to Richard Neville, the powerful Earl of Warwick, without a fight. The outcome of the Battle of Hexham had significant implications for the broader power dynamics of the War of the Roses, and Norham Castle found itself under the control of the Yorkist faction. Recognising the strategic importance of the castle in maintaining a secure border along the Anglo-Scottish frontier, King Edward IV, the reigning Yorkist monarch, took measures to ensure the castle's effective administration. Understanding Norham's role as a key stronghold, Edward IV directed efforts to properly care for, provision and garrison the castle at all times. In 1480, experiencing a revival of its role as the primary border fortress, prompting a series of further upgrades. One notable enhancement during this period was the installation of artillery, marking a significant advancement in the castle's defensive capabilities. 1482, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who would later become Richard III, achieved the recapture of Berwick. Berwick upon Tweed, a strategically significant town along the Scottish border, had been ceded to the Scots earlier. Richard's successful retaking of Berwick marked a pivotal moment in the ongoing struggles for control over the contested territories between England and Scotland. The precise details of the military campaign and the events leading to the recapture of Berwick in 1482 are not known, but it is evident that Richard, Duke of Gloucester, played a crucial role in this accomplishment. 1497, Norham Castle witnessed both strengthening and conflict when it was besieged by the Scots. The attack was led by James IV, who supported Perkin Warbeck, an imposter claiming to be one of the princes in the tower and vying for the English throne. This event is commonly referred to as the Mons Meg attack. As part of the defensive measures, Norham Castle had been further strengthened, anticipating potential hostilities along the Scottish border. The siege, orchestrated by James IV in support of Perkin Warbeck's claim, saw the deployment of the formidable Scottish siege gun known as Mons Meg. Mons Meg, a massive cannon capable of launching 330 pound or 150 kilo gunstones, was employed to inflict damage on the castle. The siege resulted in extensive destruction, with parts of the Great Tower being demolished by the powerful artillery. Despite the considerable damage inflicted, the siege was ultimately not successful, and Norham Castle held firm against the Scottish assault. Mons Meg is arguably one of the most famous pieces of artillery in the world. Today it is stationed at Edinburgh Castle as a status of national Scottish pride. Often it is mistaken for nothing more than a ceremonial weapon, but there was a time it was an instrument of war, and this attack on Norham was one of the few times it was in active commission. 1513, King James IV of Scotland, taking advantage of King Henry VIII's absence in France on a campaign, returned to lay siege to the fortress. The castle had recently completed necessary repairs following the 1497 Mons Meg attack. However, the Scots, led by King James, subjected Norham Castle to a determined assault. During the siege, the Scots bombarded the outer wall of Norham Castle for two days before successfully breaching and storming the outer bailey. The intense attack caused massive damage to the castle, and with the garrison running out of ammunition, they were compelled to surrender. Just weeks after the surrender of the castle, the Scots faced a significant defeat at the Battle of Flodden in September 1513. Following this decisive victory, the Bishop of Durham, Thomas Rufol, had Norham Castle restored to him. The castle had suffered extensive damage during the siege, leaving only the west wall and the keep relatively intact. 1515, merely two years after the siege, Bishop Thomas undertook significant restoration and enhancement efforts for the fortress. 
Thomas's swift actions demonstrated his commitment to reinforcing Norham Castle's defensive capabilities and securing the vital borderlands along the River Tweed. The primary focus of the restoration work was the Great Tower, which had suffered damage during the recent conflict. Additionally, Thomas Ruthall initiated the construction of Clapham's Tower, an enhancement designed to bolster protection over the inner ward. Recognising the strategic importance of the River Tweed Ford, Bishop Thomas Ruthall went a step further by installing casemated guns. These fortified gun emplacements were strategically positioned to guard the ford, providing the castle with an additional layer of protection against potential incursions from the Scottish side. 1523, to fortify the castle against potential aggression, gunners from Portsmouth were dispatched to reinforce Norham's garrison. This strategic move was aimed at bolstering the castle's defensive capabilities, particularly in response to the heightened tension and perceived risk of a Scottish attack. The expertise and firepower of these gunners were crucial in enhancing the castle's defensive readiness. Fortunately, the proactive reinforcement of Norham Castle proved effective. The Scots opted not to launch an attack, likely deterred by the strengthened garrison and the formidable defensive measures in place. 1559, Bishop of Durham, Cuthbert Tunstall, declined to take the Oath of Supremacy. The Oath of Supremacy, introduced during the English Reformation, required individuals to acknowledge the monarch as the supreme governor of the Church of England. By refusing to take the oath, Bishop Tunstall found himself in a position of non-compliance with the religious and political changes of the time. As a consequence of the bishop's refusal to take the oath, Northamptonshire and its castle were reverted to the crown. The change in ownership had repercussions for Norham Castle, as the Crown's administration may have lacked the same level of investment and commitment to the maintenance and upkeep of the fortress. Consequently, the castle began to decay shortly after coming under Crown control. 1561, a survey conducted on the castle revealed that the fortress was in a poor state of repair. The deteriorating condition of the castle prompted concerns about its viability as a defensive stronghold along the Anglo-Scottish border. As a result of the survey findings, the recommendation was made to construct an entirely new fortification. Sadly, from this point, the castle continued to fall into ruin all the way through to modern day. And today, it is nothing more than a forgotten ruin. This is Montgomery Castle, a sprawling and forgotten Welsh megastructure. A defensive marvel that stood as one of the most formidable fortresses ever seen in Welsh territory. How impossible was this castle to siege and learn its fascinating history by clicking here now?